Episode 3354, Slam Dunk Your Thoughts by Controlling Your Emotions. Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy day and welcome to a brand new week, better yet, a brand new month. It's April of 2024 and yes, it's Mindset Monday and it's time to get your thoughts settled in. Slam dunk your thoughts by controlling your emotions. For those of you who are brand new to Creature Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already even had the opportunity, you'll want to head on over to CreatureNow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter. The Keep It Simple Strategy, Everyday Solutions to Live, Love, and impact. Well, this episode is brought to you by AIM, inspiring connection and community. You know, we have a lot going on, and so I just want to recap something for you real quick. Number one, createyournow.com is the place to go for everything. We are under construction, so if for some reason a link isn't right, please be patient with us. We are trying to get things going. We're also going to be able to communicate with you. Yes, you're going to be able to come to createyournow.com, and you won't have to go any place else to communicate with each other and even with me. Yep, no more social media. Whoop, whoop. All right, that's the fun for it. So let's just dive in. Because we are in the middle of the thought madness bracket. And if you haven't downloaded it, you can still go do that. The link is in the show notes. Obviously, you can go to creationow.com to the shows. And you can start with episode 3333. Okay, that was our first episode for thought madness. And it's really cool. And we're going to run it this week on Monday and then next Monday, because that's when the final four championship, or I should say really the championship, the NCAA championship happens. Now, I don't know about you. Are you a basketball fan? I sure am. Only during March Madness. And that's why I thought, why not run a little bit of thought madness while we're having March Madness? But it's kind of strange. We've had Easter. We're coming off of Easter. Did you stuff your face? Did you really enjoy the Easter egg hunts and the baskets? And did you do the parades? What was it like? Now it's time to come off of your perch and it's time to settle in. And I really want you to think about where your thoughts are. Where are charge or aggressive thoughts necessary in the game of life? Because sometimes we just have to be, well, all out there. How you handle your emotions will determine where your thoughts go. So slam dunk your thoughts by controlling your emotions. Because emotional regulation is a real thing. And what I mean by that is you saying, okay, I'm not going to allow myself to go to this point in my life. And a lot of times that emotional regulation means we've got a handle on our past and that past doesn't have a handle on us. And if you're one who's all over the place, I really want to, you know, challenge you. What is it that's triggering you? Okay, because it's really important for us to look inward. No one else knows our thoughts. God and you, that's it. Unless if you speak them verbally. Now, we can make some accusations or some assumptions based on body language, you know, the way you look, your actions. And so we can look at you and say, oh, well, I think maybe she's feeling this. Oh, I think he's going this direction. But who knows 1000% sure? You and God, that's it. And so this is something that's very introspective. And it's one of those things where we don't spend enough time on it. So I thought, you know what? March Madness, oh, yeah, we're going to bring it to the table. We're going to lay it all out and we're going to have a thought madness. And I want you to think about your emotions. Okay, go back to your emotions because that's what we're talking about here. Okay, how you regulate your emotions and how those emotions affect your thoughts. And if you don't learn how to manage your emotions, they will manage you, which leads to an entanglement of thoughts and behaviors and actions that can send you spiraling out of control. In the negative or the positive? And you wonder why you find yourself where you are. You've been going through this thought madness in conjunction with March Madness, right? And there's so many plot twists as to who makes it to the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, and now the Final Four. And we know who they are. Did your favorite team make it? At least one? Well, the Final Four, if you didn't know, is UConn, Alabama, Purdue, and North Carolina State. 
And if you watched any of those Elite Eight games, at times the opponent was ahead of the ones who actually moved on to the Final Four. It was wild. I enjoyed watching the North Carolina State game. They played Duke. And Duke, I think, was ranked number four and North Carolina State number 11. I know Duke was definitely seeded to win the game. You know, North Carolina State, their Cinderella story of where they came up and how they came up, yeah, it's not going to happen. Oh, no, and they were behind at one point, but they came back. Do you think they let their emotions get the best of them? No, they didn't. Because if they did, in my opinion, they would have lost the game. But they kept it under control. The difference maker in the games was their thoughts. Their thoughts had to get them to the other side of the points being less than, thinking they were more than. And at one point during the game between Duke and North Carolina State, Burns, one of the North Carolina State players, he was seen dancing during a review, okay, a referee review. And he was so present in what he was doing. He didn't lose control or lose sight when everything else seemed out of his control. He struck his beat and danced until the next step. He was all in it. And he wasn't being cocky. I mean, he was just being himself. He knew who he was. He showed up both on the bench side and on the court side as the same player burns. And he just had this finesse about him. Even when he made baskets, if you watched him, and if not, go to YouTube and search him out. I mean, he just would do this kind of little turn and poop, there goes the basketball right in the basket. Score, two points. And it was always this little slight turn with this little almost ballet like, whoo, and he was so gentle. Yet on the court, he looks like a giant. Well, to me, he would be a giant because I'm little compared to him. But he's no little thing. He is stout. But he knows his game and he knows who he is. And more importantly, he knows his own thoughts. And he can regulate his emotions. How are you regulating your emotions so you can manage your thoughts? Or are you one who says, ah, you know what, Christiane? I really don't need this. I really got it all under control. Okay. When was the last time you blew up at your kids or your spouse? When was the last time you yelled while driving? You do not have it under control. Okay. Those are just three questions there. And most of us would say, yeah, we don't have it all together. And you know what? It's true. We may have it all together on court like Burns does, but maybe we get home and we are a mess and we just spout off at our spouse all the time or our kiddos. Sometimes even our neighbors, our best friends, our own family. When you are facing the full court press of overwhelming emotions, just like in basketball, you have got to slam dunk those unruly thoughts and emotions together. That is your kiss to keep it simple strategy. Slam dunk those unruly thoughts and emotions together. Now, if only I could do a slam dunk. But I think I shared with you before, I actually broke my finger. And as a band player, I was a flautist and a piano player. Yeah, that doesn't go over real well when you're playing an instrument by having a broken finger. No, it doesn't. So basketball and I, well, we really just don't get along. And quite frankly, unless it's March Madness, I really don't watch basketball. My opinion is this. If every game was like March Madness, the game of basketball would be different. But you know how you watch some of those games, and you know what I'm talking about, even like the NFL. Sometimes it's like, could you play like the college guys, like you really want it, instead of playing like you just deserve this? There's got to be this thing where you look at your thoughts, which control your behaviors and your actions to follow. And within all of that is weaved in there your emotions, That means you control what you can control. No one else can control you. No one else can control you. You are not a robot. There is no one sitting there with a control in their hand going, okay, it's time for you to do this. Now move to the left. Now move to the right. Oh, we go straight, straight, straight. Wouldn't that be nice? Not really. God gave us free will to make decisions. And that means, yes, sometimes we make the wrong ones. 
I do believe God gets us back on track, but I also believe that we have that free will. Well, we may take a much longer detour. So don't let the excuses that you can't do something or change something. You control you. No one else does. Don't blame your spouse. Don't blame your children. Don't blame your puppy dogs. Don't blame, I don't care what it is, traffic even. You control you. No one can make you mad. You choose to be mad. Don't send me those hate emails because you know it's true. Oh, you just make me so mad. Really? We should say, no, that's not the phrase we should be using. Oh, you just make me so mad. No, I am choosing to be mad because you acted this way, which infuriates me because I just don't understand why people just won't act this particular way. Well, that's a me issue. When you can't control somebody else, do you know what? That gives yourself more freedom because you don't sit there and get all worked up over nothing. Your blood pressure comes down a lot better throughout your entire day. You don't seem out of control because you know you can't control what you can't control. So yeah, you may kind of spout off just to like let the steam off, but you know, it's just, it's just there. This two shall pass and it passes in a blink and you're moving on to the next thing. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's a big deal when you sit there and you hoop and holler about it and it affects the rest of your hour or two hours or three hours. And then you go home and you take it with you. And then you lash out at your spouse and your children. You're even yelling at the puppy dog. And the puppy dog goes, sits in the corner like, well, what did I do, dad? What did I do, mom? Step up to the free throw line. And hit the shot. Be deliberate. Be present. Be incredible. Be who you are becoming. Slam dunk those unruly thoughts and emotions together. So what does that look like in real life? Well, I want to take you on a basketball tour here when it comes to really slam dunking your thoughts and dealing with those emotions. Number one, you have to have awareness. Emotional regulation begins with self-awareness, knowing who you are, who you are becoming, what triggers you, acknowledging and understanding your emotions, what sets you off. And by recognizing how you feel, you can identify potential emotional responses. A lot of what we give out into the world is an emotional response. If we actually would count to 20, not just 10, but 20, take some big, deep breaths, and we choose our words carefully, assess the situation, a lot of things would be different in this world, in my opinion. But we're just quick to judge quick to jump. And so therefore, we just push and shove. And we become our own bullies, our everyday bullies. Stop it already. So you've got to have that awareness. Number two, you've got to identify. Once you're aware of your emotions, you can identify whether they are helping or hindering your thoughts. If you really, really want to get down to the nitty gritty and you feel this angst or this um, tension when you're having a discussion with your spouse and all of a sudden you're like, man, it's getting hot in here. Now you don't say that out loud, but in your head, you're like, man, what's going on? It has nothing to do with that. It's getting hot in there. And no, it's not because you're having a hot flash, which technically you could because I'm having them. But even beside the point, your blood pressure is rising because something's happening internally identify those. What's triggering you? What's hindering you? And when you can do that, this step involves labeling your emotions and understanding their impact on your thoughts and actions. When you know that your spouse does something to you, you got to work through that. But that also means you can change your response. Don't react and respond. Choose to say, okay, I can't control that he does this to me when this is happening, but I can control my response to that. And so instead of getting all worked up, maybe it's like, okay, I see your point. Next, move on. That's it. Sometimes we do things to get a rise out of people. Do you do that? Identify. Number three, 
Evaluate. Emotional regulation requires evaluating the intensity of your emotions and deciding on an appropriate response, not just a reaction, but a response. And this involves considering the context of the situation and the potential consequences of different reactions. In other words, you're looking at the 30,000 view. You're taking into account, wow, if I go through with this, this is what happens. Not just, oh, I'm going to do this. You play it out in your head before you respond or before you react. And really, the reaction is kind of quick. A response is well thought out. I want you to respond. I don't want you to react. I'll say this. If you have a 911 situation, I guarantee you you're going to react. And you're going to have to assess that situation when you're in the situation, okay? But not every moment in our life is a 911 moment. Most of them are not. Most of them, yes, require our attention, but they are not life and death attention getters. See what I mean? You gotta have that awareness. You have to identify, you have to evaluate. Number four, your response. Effective emotional regulation involves choosing a response, not the reaction that aligns with your goals and values rather than reacting impulsively. That's just saying, oh, I'm just going to do whatever because I can. I'm just mad, so I don't care already. I'm too tired. I don't want to think about this, Christy. I'm just going to, and you vomit out whatever comes out of your mouth. Don't do it. It gets you into trouble. And people wonder why their marriage is on the rocks. Like, seriously. Now, this involves techniques such as deep breathing, positive self-talk, taking those moments to pause and reflect, I put myself in timeout when my kids would drive me crazy. I'm like, that's it. Mom's going to timeout. And I told them, if mom's in timeout, unless there's a blood or a flood, you don't come bother me. Because that's mom's thing of saying, okay, she's about to blow and you don't want her to. And that's how I control the situation for me, not for them, but for me. How are you responding? Number five, adapt. Emotional regulation also involves adapting your responses based on feedback and outcomes. You know, when you do something at work and you get a reaction or an outcome or your boss comes to you and says, you know what, Sue, if you looked at it this way, maybe if you approached your team this way, it might be a little bit better. That's feedback. Don't take it as criticism. Take it as, okay, I want to be who I am becoming. I want to better myself. If a particular response proves ineffective, you allow yourself to adjust your approach and learn from your experiences. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to be willing to adapt. You have to be flexible. That means you have to have the thought awareness to say, okay, I'm looking at this. This is what my emotions are doing. I'm identifying. I evaluate. My response was this. And oh, I've totally failed there. Or wait, I succeeded here. And then finally, number six, practice. Like any other skill, right? You're on the court. The slam dunk just doesn't happen. I'm short. I'm 5'3". A slam dunk? Well, I better get some height on me with my jump. But I'm telling you, my vertical, hmm, not so great. Now, I might be able to hit a shot or two, but I won't be able to slam dunk. It's going to take practice. It's going to take me working out and doing certain motions in order to get my spring in my legs to benefit me. And then maybe, just maybe, I can get close enough where it will appear a slam dunk, but nothing like somebody who's like five, six and and taller, right? But with all of it, I don't care what your height is. You got to practice because there's this rim on there. And if you don't hit it just right, guess what happens? That ball bounces right out. Oh, wait, and then you got the backboard too. It's a skill. So like any skill, emotional regulation improves with what? Practice, practice, practice. And by consistently practicing your techniques to manage your emotions, you get to enhance your ability to regulate your feelings and navigate challenging situations effectively. And that's the key, effectively. It's not about just kind of mm, blowing smoke because, yeah, it kind of looks good. Have you ever had peer pressure? 
Yeah, we don't talk about peer pressure. That's not really a term that's used very often anymore, but it still exists. You know, when you're kind of pushed into a corner, say, oh, you've got to try this. Oh, it's just the best ever. You're going to feel great. Remember back in the day, I know this dates me, but we would have the people with don't do drugs and all of this come in, and they would tell you, you know, if people are peer pressuring you and they keep telling you and pushing you, you've got to be able to say no. Well, guess what? The peer pressure in your head is your emotions. At some point, you've got to control your emotions, and that comes from what? Your thoughts. Don't let your emotions entangle you to the point of dragging you down and spiraling out of control. Practice the skill. Practice what you can do to get out of it. Overall, emotional regulation empowers you to maintain composure. You can make those informed decisions and foster positive relationships, plus cope with stress more effectively. And you're going to have thoughts that serve you well in your everyday. But it comes from what? Slam dunk those unruly thoughts and emotions together. So much of what we do is woven together. So are you ready to make some changes? Are you ready to dig a little bit deeper? Are you ready to say, you know what? I want to be better than where I am right now. Just imagine if you were 1% better tomorrow than you are today. Come on. Grab your ball. Are you ready for your first slam dunk? Go get him. Go in peace. Be present. Be incredible. Be you. I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a glorious, blessed day. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.